Howdy y'all, I'm TJ with Bear Gaming, and this is the Explosives Guide for 7 Days to Die. In this video I'll cover the grenades, rocket launcher, and landmines. How effective they are, and when to use them. Be sure to check out my range weapons guide for the exploding arrows and bolts. Let's get started with the throwables. The pipe bomb is the first thrown explosive the player gets access to. By mixing a pipe, some gunpowder, and plant fibers, the player gets to create a small explosion able to deal about 253 points of damage to entities. This affects targets in a radius of about 4 blocks, with 5 blocks of damage. With a 4 second timer, it's best used for zombies that are close together. The grenade is a step up in damage, with about 341 damage to entities and 10 to blocks. It has a 3 second timer. The contact grenade has the same damage output as the grenade, but the contact grenade has no timer and will detonate once contact is made with almost anything. These thrown explosives are best used while zombies are grouped together. Dynamite is more about destruction than taking down zombies. Don't get me wrong, it will definitely destroy some zombies. It will deal 3000 block damage with 550 entity damage. This happens over a 6 block radius. Dynamite is best used for clearing an area or taking down a structure. It also makes finding buried treasure easy. Just be careful not to use more than three. Molotov cocktails are not exactly explosive, but they're close. They ignite the surface they contact and will set a zombie on fire if they walk through it. Molotov cocktails will deal 250 fire damage and set zombies on fire for 16 seconds, while only causing minimal damage to blocks. Our last throwable is the time charge. These are a small explosive that have a 4 second timer and 1 block area of effect. With a lack and blast area, they make up for in damage with 800 points of entity damage a massive 3,000 block damage. These are best used to open locked boxes. They can also take down almost all zombies if you get one to stick near their head. There are features of the thrown explosives that you need to be aware of. They can stack. By that I mean if you throw a few down without arming them, they will remain for a while, and they can be detonated by another explosive. This will result in a chain reaction that turns a small boom into a massive boom. Perfect for the blood moon. Moving from thrown to placed explosives, we have the landmines. The landmines should be placed in strategic locations to eliminate intruders, either in a grid pattern or in a choke point. They detonate when stepped on. The 10 landmine is the smallest mine, capable of inflicting 250 points of damage to zombies and animals, in a 5 block radius and 10 damage to blocks in a 2 block radius. The next size up is the cooking pot mine. While easier to see it does deal a bit more damage at 300 points to entities in a 3 block radius. The hubcap landmine is a bit better with 450 points of entity damage in a 5 block radius. And finally, the air filter landmine with about 690 points of entity damage in a 5 block radius. Landmines can be crafted by the player and also found in the world around some buildings, so be on the lookout. They can be set off remotely by shooting them with a ranged weapon to prevent yourself from getting injured or to catch a zombie in the blast radius if they are close enough. Finally, the rocket launcher. A single shot, slow to reload device, it's able to deal explosive damage ranging from 426 points to over 1500 points when properly equipped. They can also destroy buildings with thousands of points of block damage if using the correct ammo. Speaking of ammo, there are two available offerings. The Rocket HE ammo is designed to provide a 
lot of block damage, about 2,500 at the low end, and 420 points of entity damage in a 5 block radius. The other is the rocket frag ammo. Its purpose is to deal entity damage about 1,200 on the low end while trying to minimize block damage. The list of mods that can be installed on the rocket launcher is low, but here's what I would recommend. The barrel extender mod to increase damage and range, the cripple mod to increase chances of dismemberment, the rad remover mod, and the reflex sight to assist with aiming. These will increase damage and assist with aiming down sights while ensuring the most dismemberment. There are no skill books for the explosives, but the attribute demolitions expert will help increase damage, faster aim, better dismemberment chance, and stun the targets. The rocket launcher is perfect for the survivor who intends to deal with the blood moon on foot. Just round up the zombies and boom, no more zombies. There is one great weakness the explosives have, and that's the resource cost when making them. They all require a lot of gunpowder and some specific parts to make. The rockets have several parts and building a large enough amount to handle a blood moon may take a while, until the player is established. Use the explosives as a supplement to your normal loadout until you can make a decent amount of gunpowder and parts. If you want more information about melee weapons and ranged weapons, be sure to check out these two videos. Don't forget to subscribe for more 7 Days to Die guides, and if you have, thanks, I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, laters.